Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology after a long time again. And we are here to discuss the retrogression of Jupiter, which is going to happen on May this year. This is a very important retrogression because Jupiter will be moving to Capricorn and then it will again come back to Sagittarius. So from, debilit from Mool Tricorn, it goes to debilitation and from debilitation, it comes back to Mool Tricorn. And then by the end of this year, finally, it again enters Capricorn and uh, it will also enter the Abhijit Nakshatra, which is there inside Capricorn. So regarding that, we will discuss uh, later when I make the transit video for Jupiter into Capricorn. And because this is a that transit is going to be a transit for debilitation, so I will be making that video very soon. And for every ascendant, uh, I will be suggesting some remedies which you could do. All right. And I will also be making the video for Rahu and Ketu's transit and for retrogression of Saturn also. So for Venus retrogression, the video is already made. All right. So now let us come to this retrogression of Jupiter. So many times in life, we feel that we wanted to achieve certain aspects or I would say improve certain areas of our life. And after some time, we realize that our goal has been achieved at least externally but at the same time there is a there's a void inside which tells us that maybe this is not what i wanted or maybe this is something which i thought would give me happiness but it doesn't seem to be so so what does this mean does this mean that we leave that which we are doing or we give up something completely which we have been striving for which we have been aspiring from so long no it doesn't mean that it it just means that we need a way to figure out how to incorporate that change or that positivity into the other areas of our life so for example sometimes many people they tell me that oh i have got this uh, great career opportunity should i go to this country but the problem is, uh, if I go, then there are visa issues and my uh, husband or my wife or my kids cannot come with me. Uh, they have to stay here then or maybe to a different city or to a different state also could be these days. So what should I do? Should I go or should I not go? Well, these are very crucial questions because we should never uh, do things in isolation, which means we should never try to strengthen one area of our life at the cost of another area. Okay, now also this does not mean that we do not go and uh, take that opportunity. But if it means that we have to sacrifice everything else in our life and take that opportunity, it can be in matter of career or health or even marriage, any area of our life, then maybe we are not making the very, um, a very good decision or maybe it's not the best choice because that area is the void which will be created by pursuing that opportunity in that area of life uh, could be could take a toll in uh, our overall life right so unless there's one exception for this the only exception is if you are going ahead on a purely spiritual path then we must be ready to trade off all the other uh, areas of our life at times if if our guru says to do so all right so that is an exception but this transit of jupiter is very important because it will give us a feeling that there are certain things which uh, we have been doing at the cost of certain other areas of our life so it is high time now that during this transit we figure it out which are those areas which i am trying to win over right and yes i am very sorry i forgot to give you the dates so i will be uh, going to the screen where i have three pages open from drikpanchang.com it's a very beautiful website which gives us all these dates so all these dates and times are according to uh, german times central european time cet you could change it for uh, india or us or australia wherever you stay all right, so I will start. Jupiter becomes retrograde on 14th May 2020 at 4.31 p.m. Thursday. This is when the retrogression will start. I will go to the other things later, but currently the retrogression. 
Then Jupiter goes progressive, which means it goes direct on 13th September 2020, Sunday at 2.41 a.m. So total duration of this retrogression is 122 days. So it is almost equal to four months. Okay, so for four months, it will be retrograde. So now uh, this is the Rashi transitions. Okay. So currently, as you know, Jupiter is in Dhanu Rashi. I am talking of sidereal Vedic astrology. Okay. I am not talking of tropical western. Uh, Jupiter is currently transiting Dhanu Rashi, Sagittarius, which means today I am making this video on 14th March. So it is in Dhanu Rashi now. And it is going to end, enter uh, Makar Rashi, which is Capricorn on 30th March. So another 15 days, Jupiter enters Makar Rashi, Capricorn. So it will leave Sagittarius and enter after 15 days at uh, 2.30 a.m. in the morning. So especially from 30th, you can start feeling the effects. And then it will re-enter Dhanu Rashi on 29th June because in May it is going to be retrograde. Okay, so from uh, Capricorn it comes back and on 29th June uh, at on Monday at 11 37 p.m. it will re enter Sagittarius. Okay, and finally on 20th November Friday 10 25 a.m. 2020 November 20th, remember it again enters the sign of Capricorn and that is the final entry into the sign of Capricorn, right? So these three are the dates. 30th March, it enters Capricorn, then June 29th, Sagittarius back and then finally Capricorn on November 20th. Now, these are the dates for the nakshatras, okay? So Jupiter was in Purvashada from 4th January. Purvashada completely falls under Sagittarius. So on 4th January 2020, Saturday at 1 p.m., it entered Purvashada, crossing Mula Nakshatra. Then it just recently entered Uttarashada, which means currently Jupiter is in Uttarashada. Okay. So 8th March 2020, Sunday, 3.12 a.m., Jupiter entered Uttarashada. So one week before almost it had entered. And then it will again enter Purva Shada on 26th July 2020, Sunday 9.34 a.m. So Purva Shada, this is again in Sagittarius because by uh, June, this transit will happen back to Sagittarius. If you remember, 29 June. So uh, the last degrees of Sagittarius is the first Pada of Uttara Shada. Okay. And then after one month, so from 29 June to 26 July, Jupiter will be moving back in the first Pada of Uttara Shada. And on 26 July, it re-enters Purva Shada. Okay. And then we know uh, after 26 July, on September 13th, it will stop its retrogression and then it will start moving forward and on 30th October it will re-enter Uttarashada first Pada in Sagittarius okay and finally on 20th November it will, it will enter second Pada of Uttarashada which is in Capricorn all right so therefore this transit is uh, involved this transit is not involving uh, Shavan Nakshatra Okay, if it would have involved, it would have been a very dynamic transit, of course. So now, uh, what is Purva Shada? We all know the story of uh, Vritrasur, which is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's very important that you uh, read this story of Vritrasur. Okay, if you want to know what Purva Shada is, and uh, Vritrasur also has a lot of things to do with uh, Mula Nakshatra, with Jeshta Nakshatra. Okay, so. The houses which Jupiter rules in your chart, depending on your ascendant, right? Those houses will, will be very crucial for this retrogression. So whenever a planet goes retrograde, what happens is we tend to reflect on the actions which we uh, did, which we took, the decisions that we took, and we try to see if they will help us in the larger context of our, uh, of our eventually reaching the ultimate fulfillment so it should not happen that we take a decision in one area of our life and that completely throws us out of everything else because then even we we will not be able to do justice to that area of life so 
So let's take the example. Suppose you are focusing too much on your career. You are not focusing on your health. Then one day your health will go down and you cannot even focus on your career. So therefore, if you, if you are not satisfied uh, in that area, in all reasonably satisfied in all the spheres of your life, you cannot remain happy for a long time. Okay. So that's, that's what happens. Many times people, they will try to compensate lack of happiness in a particular area by pushing and pumping energy into some other area of their life. And then they end up becoming more and more, more and more and more and more and more miserable. Right. So that should not be done. So whichever houses Jupiter rules in your chart, depending on your ascendant, you should, um, you should make a note of it. All right, so check what have you done in the last one year because Jupiter has been hovering in uh, this uh, Jeshtha Gandanta, okay, Jeshtha Nakshatra, then Mula, that's a very dreaded zone which Jupiter had been uh, hovering around for a long time. So you could, you could check the activities which you, have, which you had been doing from 2018 onwards, okay. Uh, October 2018, it had entered Scorpio. So you could check from last year, mid somewhere. Just when it entered Jeshta Nakshatra. So then it crossed Gandanta and went to Mula. So you can you could check. Did you try too hard to get certain things done? Did you did you did you punish somebody very hard, or did you punish yourself? Did you just pump out everything in one area of your life and then? Now you're feeling choked up. It's like too much of something or and too much of something and nothing of something. <laughs> All right. So because of that, what happens now? Because uh, see, this, this is a story. If you read the Shrimad Bhagavatam and uh, I'm very happy to know so many of you have been reading. So if you have not read it, then please go and uh, get a copy and you can find the description in the you can find the link to Amazon in, my, in the description box, right? So there the story of Vitrasur is mentioned that how Indra to kill Vitrasur, he, uh, as they say, by hook or by crook, right? So, and then later on what happened? He, he got, uh, you know, he, he suffered terribly. I, I will not go into that story in detail, but this is very important that we try to understand that we should not punish ourselves and others in pursuit of something external. It can happen with relationships only, also, not only with career. It could happen that your obsession for one person okay, has crossed all, uh, all the bound all boundaries and all limitations, and you have traded every area of your life. To stay with this one person who doesn't even want to stay with you maybe or maybe they want to stay with you but you think it is love but it's not actually love it, it is more of a lust or obsession or infatuation okay. and then when you do that then you see your career has gone down your family you are not in good terms with the family you are not in good terms with your spiritual life you are not in good terms with your career your boss your guru or anybody with your children or with your brothers, with your sisters, okay. Or sometimes people become too much focused on uh, their spiritual life, which is very good. But at the same time, if you have your mundane responsibilities, okay, till the time you are in this material world, you have to do your mundane responsibilities properly. You cannot just wish them out, okay. So therefore, the most important thing is that uh, when where, what happens when we win a battle? Because from Purva Shada, when a planet enters Uttara Shada, we get a feeling that the battle is won. We are victorious. But the question is, is is it worth? This is what Arjuna asks to Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Right? Arjuna asks this question that, my dear Krishna, please tell me, what is the use of uh, fighting this fratricidal war? Because nobody is going to live. Vishma will not be there. Drona will not be there. What, what the hell will I do by sitting in the throne if Bhishma and Drona are not there to see me? What is the use of the kingdom? What is the use of all these materialistic pleasures and name, fame, power, position? Well, then Krishna answers that. Well, I know Krishna says it's difficult, but 
you got to do it because that is the need of the hour because they although they are very great personalities Dona and Bhishma but somehow they have or they had to or they have consciously chosen to side with the Kauravas okay the reason could be whatever Bhishma had taken a vow and Dona was indebted and all that's fine we are not going to that but at the end of the day they are siding on Adharma all right, headed by all the Kuru, Kurus, especially Duryodhana, then Shakuni, Karana, Dushasan, all these. All these crooks, Drona and Bhishma have sided with all these crooks. So therefore, they must be killed. Because even if they are great personalities, and Bhishma is one of the 12 Mahajans, but yes, you've got to do that. Because there's no other option. Because if they, if they are living, if they are alive, they are protecting Duryodhana, and the Dhanashtra and their evil, as I say, DNC, Duryodhan and company, <laughs> then Adharma will flourish throughout the entire universe. You know, what, what not they did to the Pandavas, what not they did to uh, Draupadi, what not they did to Kunti. The level of torture they had uh, put these personalities through, that, that is beyond comprehension. No, there, nobody can even imagine. Right? So that was the need of the hour. So, so similarly, we also need to check in our life. What is what is that which I am doing, uh, and if that is really what? And it can it could happen sometimes that you might have to uh, sacrifice for uh, achieving certain things in one area of your life. You might have to totally sacrifice everything else in your life. Okay, that could happen. Like Arjuna had to do that because that was for spiritual cause. But at the same time, we have to check in our lives. Is uh, are we doing that for something higher, or is it just a mere obsession, or or is it just an obsession for name, fame, power, position, authority, dominance, control, subduing others, trying to prove ourselves? So, if that is our objective, which we will not know directly, we have to sit and introspect and see what is the problem, and then we will realize that oh yeah, we I, I had gone too far on in this area then what is actually required and then we shall realize that everything else need not fall down for one particular area of life and when jupiter re-enters uh, purva shada you could feel uh, the the need to again check if the decisions which you took somewhere in january or maybe last year i would say just check november okay november december last year you, 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 you will get an opportunity to see if there is if there is something which you can change in those areas. Life, what are those areas? What will you end up deciding? That will ultimately depend on your own horoscope and your dashas and have to be dealt individually. All right, so. Always remember, first we check the dashas, and I am going to start making videos on dashas, Shotri dasha, then yogini dasha, so many other dasha systems. Okay, and I have also made some videos uh, on on uh, how to combine different dasha systems. Okay, with uh, Shikha Makija ji, long time back, but I have not yet uploaded them. I'll upload them soon I, after I uh, uh, split them into parts. Okay. All right, that is it from my side. And I forgot to say, as usual, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit uh, based on your dashas and your individual horoscope, then you can always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website. All right, thank you very much. Wish you all the best for this transit.